It's time. Good morning. Good morning, church. It's so good to see you this hot, hot morning. It's hot already. It's amazing. Um, Charlie was just reminding me how much I love summer, and, uh, and God is so good. So uh, it's going to be summer for a long time. Those of you who don't like the heat, I'm so sorry. Just want to welcome you this morning, though, on this hot summer morning. And we're so glad you're here. And if you're following us online, um, it's great to welcome you as well. So we have a lot of things going on today and beyond and uh, a lot of things that have taken place and a lot of things that are coming up. So I want to share some of them with you. But remind you, if you have prayer needs or concerns, please write, uh, send them to us or write them and put them um, on that index card in the jar in the center of your table. So uh, do that and we pray mightily for you. So we had a time of prayer for Camille on Friday. It was a sweet, sweet gathering and we just really feel like... Uh, God has uh, instigated some good things in, in her direction. So please continue uh, to pray for growth in her liver and, uh, and options on the horizon. So we pray for that. Today at 3 o'clock at Tack Island, 11 Wedge Terrace, we're having our women's swap meet. So bring your sunglasses, bring your bathing suit, whatever you need, towel, uh, sunscreen for those of you who use that. And uh, we will be gathering. We're going to have taco salad, and we're going to be healthy um, for the most part. <laughs> and so we invite you to come. And if you haven't had that on your calendar, you just come, and uh, we're excited to have you there. It's going to be a great afternoon. Uh, there's a lot of people who are away this weekend, but they're heading back at 3 o'clock to join us. So we're looking forward to that opportunity. Today is the last day to order T-shirts, and so please do that. Tracy, by midnight, would that, <laughs> it's the 12th. Oh, two more. Don't tell them. No, today is the last day. Do it tonight by midnight. But she's going to give you some grace. So, um, <laughs> But you know people in deadlines, do it now. You, when we take the offering um, a little bit later, do it on your phone. It's really quick and easy. If I can do it, I did it this morning. I'm so <laughs> proud of myself. I'm not, you know, savvy although that's a surprise to a lot of you. But um, anyway, it's uh, great options for that. Yard sale. Yes, Megan thought it was today she could drop off her beautiful stuff. Um, but no, mm -hmm. it's next Sunday, the 19th, right after service. And uh, we are going to have at 4 o'clock, we're asking students and even any adults, if you'll come and just help set up for a little bit, just a little bit, and then you can play Gaga Ball, and I will serve ice cream sundaes from 4 to 6 next Sunday. We just need a lot of hands to orchestrate some things, and then you can go or you can get ice cream. Uh, so please put that on your calendar. And any time during the week, if you want to come and help set up, we're going to do a lot outside, too, so that um, there's, it's not stuff in here. It'll be a lot um, at, in the exterior of the church. So um, please bring your stuff. Share them with us. Also, uh, we are having an anchor gathering on July 26th, right after service, and that is Sunday. And we're going to um, our house again, bring your beach stuff. And then on Monday, July 27th, our BG kids are going to be having their gathering as well at 4 o'clock. And so uh, they'll be doing beach stuff and gathering as well. We are hoping that Bernie gets back. He's on, um, uh, at work for like, he works all the time. But uh, we're shooting for men's breakfast on July 26th. We'll keep you posted, but kind of put that on your calendar as well. I think that's about it, except I know there's one birthday in the house. I don't know if there's more than that. But Matt. Barnhart, it's his birthday tomorrow, right? A little bird told me. And I uh, just want to sing to you. Anybody else have a birthday in the house? Anybody send a comment right now? We'll sing to you. No? It's just all about you, Matt. We won't ask you how old you are, but how old are you? 50. 50? 50, 50, no, really? Uh, oh, 
Well, that's pretty close, so don't want to usher that one in. Okay, let's sing Happy Birthday to Matt. Ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Matt. Happy birthday to you. Well, let's stand, and if you want to elbow somebody, say hello. Uh, let's prepare to worship God this morning. already standing up, go ahead and stand up, turn to the person next to you and say, good morning. And then turn to the person you ignored and said, good morning, I care about you. Let's worship the Lord this morning. Stand up, move around, clap your hands. All my dreams come alive, life is for living With you, I made my decision Come on! Lift me up, fill my eyes with wonder Forever young in your love, this freedom's untainted With you, no moment is wasted Come on, see the sun! The sun now bursting through the clouds, black and white, turns the color all around. All is new in the Savior I am found, and this is living now. And this is living now. the way cause you're right beside me in your love i'm complete there's nothing like living with you this life i created i choose come on see the sun now bursting through the clouds black and white there's a color all around all is new in the savior i am found and this is living God, your freedom is an open door. You are everything I wanted for. See now, see the sun now bursting through the clouds, black and white, turns the color all around. All these new in the Savior I am found. Come on, see that church. And see the sun now bursting through the clouds, black and white. The color all around, all is new in the Savior I am found. And this is living now. And this is living now. Well, come on, put your hands together. Today is a good morning to worship the Lord that He is here, that He is with us. As we continue to sing out to him, let's not hold back from him this morning. Let's worship him in every bit of his glory that he deserves. Come on, sing people. People. Come together, 
Strange as neighbors, our blood is one. Come on. And children of generations of every nation of kingdom come. Come on, we know this. So don't let your heart be troubled. Hold your head up high, don't fear no evil. And fix your eyes on this one truth. And God is madly in love with you. Take courage, hold on, be strong. Remember where our help comes from. Hey! Oh, 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 oh.
Yes, God, your presence is here. The heavens are open wide here now.
on, church. You sing this. Sing it. What change who I am? I belong to you. Sing, I belong. Father, I pray that as an entire congregation that we know that we are yours this morning. That God, that you have called us here. You've called us out of our darkness. You've called us out of our week, out of our day, to be here, to be with you. That we are in your presence right now. And that we know whose we are. In your name I pray, amen. I was telling Kate, between the mask, the microphone, the earrings, the hair, it's <laughs> such a challenge. <laughs> well, we continue on in worship this morning and uh, invite John uh, to come as we have a time of giving. Good morning, everyone. Um, <laughs> thanks, June. So uh, Friday night, the family and I sat down and watched a movie, and the timeline of the movie included Christmas. Um, so just seeing the imagery and hearing the sounds of that time of year, Christmas trees, lights, presents, family, jingle bells and, cr jingle bells and Christmas carols made me smile. That time of year is always filled with joy, love, peace, and hope. And I don't know about you, but I know I could use a lot more of that during uh, this time. A global pandemic, social distancing, civil unrest, racial tension, negative politics, conflicting and confusing information, and the stress over making simple everyday situations like how or if my kid goes, should go to school. It's been overwhelming and uh, had me missing days when you can just feel joy, love, and peace and hope in the air. So with that in mind, I made a little Christmas in July gift for everyone. That, um, it, that might need a reminder of the hope that we have all year because we're Jesus followers. My assistant, Maddie, is going to be putting these little cards on the front and back tables um, that you can keep in your wallet or your purse or put on your fridge to remind you of those Christmas good feels. So please take one on your way out. So I'd like to uh, close my little talk here with Romans 15:13. It says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now we can bless the offering. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and for bringing us here today to worship you and learn more about you. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to this world to live among us, teach us, lead us, and save us. As we think about that precious gift, I pray that this room is flooded with joy, love, peace, and hope. During these troubled times, please help us take those feelings and spread them in our homes and in our community. Father, thank you for today's offering. Please bless it and multiply it so that the church can continue to be a place that provides help, hope, and healing to those that need it. We love you, Father. It's in your name we pray. Amen.
Well, our summer message series is called, I hope you remember, No Other Gospel. And last week we talked about that the gospel matures us. And maturity in Christ pushes us outside of ourselves. And today's message is titled, The Gospel Pushes You Out. This past week, we had uh, our AIM students in grades 3 through 5 spend Tuesday, all day Tuesday, from 8.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. on mission. And then the next day, on Wednesday, our anchor students did the same thing. They spent the whole day on mission as well. We were all disappointed that we were not able, adults who were on mission as well this summer, were not able to have a whole week of uh, kids' feet week was a whole week, and then we were going to North Carolina, Wake Forest, and, and then we were doing a new mission in Kentucky to work with uh, kids at a summer camp, and then uh, Guatemala as well. And so we were all disappointed and that we weren't able to do that. We had quite a lineup for this summer. Disappointed, but not discouraged, not defeated. Our students rose up. They rose up to the challenge of giving a whole day and getting up really, really early at 8.30 a.m. Now, for our students and some of their parents, 8.30 a.m. was even the sacrifice, right? It was really, really a challenge. But they were getting up early and i've got to tell you they came ready ready to serve we distributed plastic bags that we stapled uh, requests for donating to the food pantry and usually we give our community a whole week they had less than 24 hours and then the other students the next day came to pick them up pick all the donations up we weren't sure how that was going to go or how many people respond we all prayed at every single school that our students are going to be going to, and we built altars to remind uh, what God has done and that God is present. We blessed our fire and rescue squads and our police department, and we visited shut-ins. We delivered Meals on Wheels. We served snow cones to our preschoolers and then to the public. We wrote on scriptures on top of shells and then uh, scattered them on beaches. You know what? Take a look at how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. A restless generation We're turning over every stone Hoping to find salvation in a world that's left us cold Can we get back to the altar Back to the arms of our first love There's only one way to the Father And He's calling out to us To the captive it looks like freedom To the orphan it feels like home To the skeptic it might sound crazy To believe in a God who loves
he's already received us into his. In my own life, it means forgiveness when I know I deserve the fall. It called me out of my darkness and carried me to the cross. In a moment, my eyes were open. In that moment, my heart was changed. Like a blinding light in the dead of night, it's the gospel. To the modern way I'm trying to be somebody I'm not But it's not what I want And tell me there's another way All of the lights are chased and not faded All the cheap feels were only time wasted Tell me why society's plan Should define who I am Surely there's a higher way All of my best friends Are sick of pretending
is the Beautiful Gate Church. This is us. This is who we are because of Jesus Christ. These children and their parents who open up their hands and their hearts to love well, serve well, and engage well in this season, in this time. So let's read together today's scripture about how the gospel pushes us out. We find it in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we're going to jump in at verse 14 and end at 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 14 through 21. Paul is writing to the church at Corinth, and the gospel is just embedded in these scriptures. For, for the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that no one has died for all, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. When, when we're saved, when we believe and accept the gospel truth about God's love for us, his love for us, our change of heart takes place. We receive the Holy Spirit, and it leads to a transformed life that leads to external action. There's a product, a byproduct of that. We've been set free from believing that we are the center of the universe, that everything revolves around us, that we're so important. The gospel propels believers outward to meet the needs of others. The love of God is what motivates us to do good works, like we just watched on the video. Our actions are a product of the gospel. No other gospel but the gospel of Jesus Christ. Paul tells the church, he tells Christ's followers, that God, God calls us to be ambassadors of Christ, that God is making his appeal through us as ambassadors. Paul writes to the church at Ephesus in Ephesians 5, verses 1 and 2. He says, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children, as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Christ died for us, gave himself up for love, so that we would see, we would experience, we would believe uh, that we are children of God in love. When we know, when we know and we understand that, we can go out when we go out as dearly beloved children. We're free. We're free to, to truly love other people. We don't, we don't worry. We're not putting on a show even though some of the kids don't mind being videotaped, but we're not trying to earn approval. We're not looking for at a girl, at a boy. We don't worry. 
We don't worry, did I do that well enough? Am I good enough? We don't worry about that. As children of God, we're free. We have care and compassion for others. It's easy. It happens easily for every single single one of us. The care and compassion that comes to us comes because of Jesus Christ, because of his love. And in that love and freedom that we've received in Christ, we can be free and love others freely. We do the works motivated by the love of God. Old people, little people, everybody in between, we're motivated, we're pushed out because of the love of God that comes to us. But we have to believe, we have to receive that we're God's children. We have to have an affection for our Father and for our Savior. And then love just inhabits us. We offer others when we give good works, good gifts, our presence, our love, our freedom. We give a glimpse to others, to the world of the character, the character of God. They see it in us. Our AIM kids serve snow cones to our preschoolers. And the smiles and the joy that filled the room was, it was overwhelming. They, they were so happy to serve and, and take care of these little, the little children. You should have seen them. They were just looking up to the big children that they would come and serve us and, and run the machine and, and the syrup. And you know, the big kids, they looked at these little ones and they loved them because they were so little and so precious and so cute. Every single one. They didn't miss miss one kid from feeling special and love that day. People, uh, they were just, we were out on this, uh, this street right here and our kids in 94 degrees blazing heat, jumping up and down with posters and serving snow cones. People couldn't believe they're free. It's free. Yep, just we love you. God bless you today. Trying to share some joy. Some people just stuffed some money in my backpack and said, just take this and just use it. You put a smile on my face today. This one woman and another, another woman said, you are the, this was the highlight of my day. And then a man posted on Facebook, Beautiful Gate Church, what a blessing that you just broke into today with such joy and smiles and gift of a snow cone. Our kids, they, they were just ready to go, ready to serve, ready to love. They were free. They were children. And, and it's contagious. When you hang out with them, you become childlike too, in a good way. They were happy, and it was contagious. We gave our bags to ask people to give food donations. We didn't give them much time. But every student, when we were delivering the bags or picking up the food, they said, what a great ministry. They were so happy to serve that those in need, those who needed food, would be blessed by their serving. People were generous. And then this one person put out with their food a money donation. It was a check. And on the check, he wrote, Beautiful Gate Church. Students were searching in their Bibles and phones to find encouraging scriptures and, and putting them on shelves. They were just hoping, hoping that somebody would pick it up and be blessed or encouraged or even be curious and, and Google what they found on the shelf and somehow God could use it. They, they knew that they'd never know if that shell, their shell, made a difference, but it didn't matter. Praying for the police and rescue and fire departments, it brightened their spirits. It, there's a lot of news coverage, but... Fluvanna's police department isn't on the news. People aren't holding up signs for fire and rescue in our neighborhood. So we were just able to our own thank them and bless them. And, and just, it does something to your heart when you give and are motivated by love. When we do good works because of love, we offer others a glimpse into God's character, and it does something. 
God wants everyone, everyone to be reconciled, Paul says, to himself. And when we're reconciled, we become new creations. A new things happen. And our spirit, our heart, it's new. We become new creations and we become, we're adopted into the family of God as his children. And then Paul says, we are now ambassadors, ambassadors of Christ. We're called to herald, herald the gospel. We're all called to herald the gospel. Even though we all have different gifts, we herald the gospel in different ways. But we're all called to the ministry of reconciliation, which means we're restored, we're reconciled to God. We're no longer enemies, we're loved, we're children of God because we believe that Jesus died for us. Telling the gospel, we can do that in so many different ways, and we want to find our fit when we do that so that people, all people, might be saved. God does the saving work, and we just share the simple truth of the gospel. You know, the best way to see whether the gospel has taken root in a church or an individual is to see whether they're pushed out. We've been partners with Effort Church in Liberia for, uh, I was counting when I was writing this sermon, for over 20 years now. 20 years? That, that seems hard to believe. God began this partnership. We discovered one another. Uh, and we've been just in partnership for a very, very long time. Many of you know we sent a team from the gate here in the beginning of this year, January 2020. It really did start off with a bang. So we thought... <laughs> I told you if, if you were around during that time that there was a little boy in one of our medical clinics and he was terribly disfigured in his private area. He had a strangulated hernia and no one in Liberia, nowhere he went, would even assess it, look at it, or there was no hope of it ever being repaired. He was mocked, he was humiliated. He walked in just an ashamedness until we came. We made an assessment, and, and uh, within less than a week, this child was transported to the city. And because of the networking of the saints, he had surgery in less than a week when we found him in the jungle. And we were able to see him on the day, postoperatively, the day after the surgery was done. He, he, he just was a new creation, and his father testified that Jeremiah would know what the Lord has done. Well, a few weeks ago, during this pandemic, if you think it's bad here, imagine Liberia, a, a country with no resources and, and just masses of people in the city and so few doctors. Uh, in the midst of all of this, Effort Liberia still sent out a team to the jungles of Cooperstown to uh, bring supplies and resources that were needed. And one of the pastors demanded that they take a picture uh, for us of Jeremiah, his family, and the pastor. So I want you to take a look. The little boy in blue is Jeremiah. And he's a happy-go-lucky boy now. And that's his family that he's with. He has a younger um, sibling and the pastor and, and his son. This is the gospel pushing out. We were supposed to go to Guatemala. Some of you were in this room were supposed to go to Guatemala to co-labor with partners, a, a church that we've been working with for over four years now. And we, we just recently sent some funds to help pay for the rent for their church space that they just began a year ago. And we've been helping them in Monsignor Romero for four years. And 
they sent some pictures of a ministry that they undergirded a few weeks back during their pandemic. They told me there were many people that were sick and they were shut down big time in Guatemala, but they sent a team to Monsignor Romero to just bring the poorest people food. Take a look at some of their faces. Imagine a church having so little during this scarce time, yet finding the resources, sacrificing the resources to bring food to those who are poorer than themselves. This is the gospel pushing out. God has ordained who we are. He created us. He knit us together in our mother's womb. He ordained who we are. He ordained where we are, where we were born into, the time we were born into. And he ordained the reason for our lives. We have to live on purpose. And all of life is mission. When we're on mission, we are growing, we are maturing, we are becoming holy. The Bible calls that sanctified. But God gets all the glory, all the glory. Listen, we simply have to tell people, your people, my people, those that God has entrusted to our care near and far, to tell them the truth of the gospel, that there's freedom in that for us, because it's up to God to do the rest. We just have to tell them. We don't have to explain the gospel perfectly. We don't have to defend creationism. We don't have to argue about atheism. It's God who opens up the hearts and minds of the believers. It's up to him. Our responsibility is to just tell people it's as simple as that. It's so simple, a child can do it. May we, Beautiful Gate Church, endeavor to do what God is calling us to do now, especially now. Let us pray. God, you are a way maker, a miracle worker. You are light in the darkness, and you want your people to be light, to shine their light, to be pushed out externally. Fill us up internally this morning that we would go out, outside of ourselves, that we'd be sensitive to the leading, guiding of the Holy Spirit, that you would give us eyes to see this morning. Go where you would have us go and help us to tell the gospel with words. Words are needed so people can accept the truth, hear the truth, that their hearts would be changed by the truth of the gospel. Lord Jesus, Thank you for saving us for our lives that we were lost but now we're found we were blind but now we see thank you God for the gift of Jesus Christ his sacrifice I pray this morning that we're not ashamed of the, the gospel and that we won't keep it to ourselves that it can simply be a conversation a declaration, our prayer life, our, our life every day, that all, that all would hear the good news and lives would be bent in your direction. So God, thank you. Thank you for every good gift that you have given us. 
Thank you for others on the journey. Thank you that you've entrusted so much to ourselves that we would not keep it to ourselves. And let us not, oh Lord, let us not grow weary of doing good. We pray in the name, the power, and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray that this morning God would, would have touched us, that we, he would have ignited a spark in us. The touch of God changes everything. And then we, too, can bring that touch to others. So I love this song, and I just pray that as we sing this song, masked, maybe just carrying some burden or fear or worry, that, that we would just abandon whatever it is in the way and just touch God, just to reach out upward in God's direction and touch the sky. So let's stand, and if you need prayer this morning, you come, and, and we'd love to pray with you. Let's stand and continue to worship our God that we might be pushed out.
hit the ground. Sometimes our knees have to hit the ground before we'll look up. Is that not so, amen? And so we're looking up today, and, and I just pray that, that as uh, God has spoken through his word and his spirit, that, that you feel his, his push, push outward in the direction of others, and that you know that you're loved and accepted, adopted as children of God, so you can be motivated by his love and not worry, not worry about uh, whether you do it right or even how you do it. He designed you uh, uniquely for his glory as an ambassador of Christ. So let's go today and let's push out the gospel and give God all the glory, the beautiful gate church and your beautiful feet. God bless you today. <laughs>